This is just a quick overview on how to use Macaw. So, as you're probably aware, Macaw is a web design tool or mock-up tool. In any case, as you get started, you'll see a couple different options up at the top. For now, we've already saved this as a MCW file, which is just Macaw's format for Photoshop. As an example, it's a PSD. For Macaw, it's a MCW. In any case, let's just get started. So we've got a bunch of tools over here. I'll actually show you. We've got obviously the cursor tool, text. If you hover over everything, it'll tell you what each thing is. Um, these two buttons are for forms, and we'll go over forms in a little bit. And then we've got the viewport tool. So what the viewport tool does is it lets you see what your site would look like at different dimensions. And this will obviously be a better representation as we go along. Then we've got the just select tool, so if you want to move around the canvas. So you see a little preview here of where you are actually on the screen. And then furthermore, we've got the eye drop tool, which just lets you select what color. Um, down here, you can just click this to get all your different styles. We don't have any styles at the moment. And then this is for feedback, and this is gradients. Now, getting back to a clean slate here, let's get started. So if we go to the inspector tool, We've got our different sizes here. We haven't set any breakpoints. Um, breakpoints is just pretty much saying if someone's on a size 900 pixel, you want to have it look differently than if it's on a size 1200. And that can also obviously change based on what type of stylings you apply, which we'll kind of go over in a little bit of detail later on. So let's actually get this site started. So when you first start, you have two different options. You've got an element and a container tool. I've rarely used the element tool. Um, just because you only really need it for buttons per se. So we're going to start with the container. Because obviously we need a header. So let's go make a uh, header over here. Now my screen obviously doesn't get the whole size, so we're going to have to do a little dragging here. So anyways, we're just dragging this. We've got a default 1200. Let's actually set it um, smaller. So if we check, if we click outside, this is the global style property. So we're going to set this to like 900. Um, by default it's 1200 as you kind of saw and then we can center it either by moving our through here or if you click view you can click center canvas and there's there's shortcuts for everything so I think if you go into um, help there's a keyboard shortcuts and you click here and it'll give you a bunch of different shortcuts um, and I'm sure they'll let you set your custom shortcuts down the road anyways getting back to it so we've got a 900 pixel little thing here and we've got this container so let's go over the little tabs here. Inspector, obviously, it shows you what current element you're on. Um, and you want to be selected on here when you're looking at this. If you have, obviously, this is just for moving around, and this is the, you know, just select tool. Anyway, so we've got the container selected. We've got a couple different options here. So this variable name here, what it does is it just sets a JavaScript property. So an identifier, which really isn't needed too much, at least in my experience, but um, just as a note, this is a kind of overview of what I've seen. I'm in no way professional, I would consider myself. So take it as, you know, everything with a grain of salt. And this is obviously an early version. I've been working on it in the alpha, well, the beta stages. So I've got a little background now. It's actually been released today for most Kickstarter backers. Anyways, going into it, we've got different options here. We've got a background. So we can select an image or a gradient if we want as a background or just a plain color over here. So let's say we want to go with a light blue. We can select here. Now, you've got a couple different options here we'll show. We've got, you can select how you want it to be formatted, RGB, HSL, uh, and hex. We're going to go with RGB just because that's a default and it's pretty much the best way to do it, I guess. Um, anyways, so we've got this little slider over here for transparency. So let's let you select it. So if you push it all the way to the top, obviously you get 100% transparency. And then it'll actually show you different variations. Now let's say we want to use this as our global style. This color we'll use as our global style. So if we want to do that, we can add it to what's called the swatches. Swatches is just a saved list of different colors. So if we just click add, it adds it right there. And we can get back this color easily when we select another element. So now we're going to click OK. And it's been selected. And you'll see up here now, we've got this bar. So this bar shows us the properties of this element. Um, the X coordinate, you know, from the right. And if you actually click on this here, like on where it says the dimensions, on a lot of them, it'll let you switch it. Um, but anyways, 
So we've got a percent here where we can set it as a pixel. I like to keep it as percent. And you can have it aligned from the left, from the center, or from the right. Furthermore, what we have here is a fluid layout or dynamic positioning. And you can do an absolute positioning. So you can have, it, have an exact XY coordinate. And then you can have it as a fixed position. So we've got those options there. So what we're going to do now is put this at the top. So we can either move it, obviously, and it will change you see up here. Or you can just click zero because we're starting at the top. Uh, then let's just set the height here and it everything should snap as you go across if you want it that way Now you'll see our height is or our width is actually 100% Now if we wanted to which we this is irrelevant because this is just the top here We could set it so as the user drags the screen smaller So if we save you could I'm just going to be clicking command s and then command p is for publishing So as we drag everything you can have the dimensions change now publishing does sometimes take a little bit depending on the size, but um, as things go along, it'll get faster, obviously. Um, and there is another little tool here. We'll go over a little bit later, which this is pretty much live updating. So Macaw has a built-in browser, but you can also use your own browser. So if we pull over a tab here, let's just say Chrome, and we'll open this page here. So as we make changes, this page will actually update. Now, because you can only see one screen at a time, you won't really obviously see the changes going on. Now, in any case, we'll move this back over there, and we'll close the preview window. All right, so we've got our first element here, and obviously in the outline, we only see one element. Now, let's go over some other things also while we're here. This shows you what's visible, so if you click on it, just like Photoshop, it'll make it visible, not visible, and if you click here, it'll lock it, so you cannot move the element, no matter how much you want to try, obviously. So now we're going to unlock that. Um, and now to change the name of an element, what you do is in the outline, you double click it, and you'll be viewed with the name characteristics. So you can change the type of element and its ID or class, depending on what you're doing. And it'll give you a bunch of different options here. You can also, you know, set, let's say like a H1, whatever. But in this case, we have a header. So we're just going to call this header and click enter and hope it works. <laughs> There we go. All right, so now we've got our header in here and we can add more elements to it. So let's just add some text. In this case, we're just gonna, wrong text there. Gotta be careful what you're doing. All right, so we're gonna add some text. And in this case, we're just gonna call this pet adoption. Let's hope I can spell correctly. All right, so we've got pet adoption. And now we're gonna go back to the inspector element. So we've got a bunch of different options and based on what elements you're using, you're gonna have different variables and different options in your inspector tab and you can obviously click each title and it will minimize maximize you know just simple things like that so we can select our text um, so what you can also do you can use system fonts and they also have some pre-built in fonts I don't recommend using the system fonts unless you're just gonna build it locally or you have a license to those fonts um, I just like the pre-built ones so we're gonna go with Helvetica I think that's how you pronounce it to begin with and what we're gonna do is let's Increase the size here to 27, and then the color will just set to white. And we can change everything right there, and we'll just move it over. And actually, let's just make this pretty. All right, so we've got our t our logo per se here. So what we can do is just call this H1 logo. You'll see in the outline now we've got it here. Now here's a note about the outline. The way the outline shows it is the way you'd see it in a browser. So you always want to put everything that starts first at the top and then work the way down. So we've got our header here and we want to put the logo as a subclass of it. So presuming we did this right, which I would hope so, the container should allow us. Now just as a note, there are bugs in here. Okay, so when we do this, so put it as a subclass. So the outline tool can be a little bit budgety. You just got to be careful how you move everything. So we've got this as a subclass of the header. So I'll just show you just for intensive purposes here. When we actually go over here, this is our Chrome preview. It actually updates just as, like I said, as you do everything. So you'll see that we've got our header class as the main tag and then as the parent. We've got our H1 class and it's called logo. Okay, now we can move that back and go like this. All right, so now we've got our title, and let's say we want to go change something in here. So to get back in, what you want to do is you double click. So because currently we're in the header area, if you double click, 
you'll see down here it tells you what your attributes are or what locations you're in. So we're in the header and now we can click on the logo. And if we wanted to, I don't know, make everything slanted or put everything in full uh, caps, we could do it there. Or let's just put an underline. Well, we don't want an underline, but it's still the same purpose. Let's say we want to put a link back to the main page. So what it'll actually let you do is you can do two different things. You can enter in a link. So let's say if you want to index that HTML, we can do it that way. Or you can select down here and it will show you all your pages. So if we click there, we can just click index that HTML. We've got some additional options like how much white space we want, word wrap, all that, which really for our purposes is relevant. Okay, so going back to this, now let's say we want a body. So what we're going to do is we'll create another attribute. Now just as a note, my main thing is in web design, it's more, um, it's more programming. So don't hate me if I'm not following the HTML5 standards. Anyways, so we've got another container here. And let's just call this section and we'll call this um, main. So now we've got a section here. And let's just give it a color of white. And we'll make it fully transparent. And what we're actually going to do is we'll set the background here. So we've exited out. You'll see down here there's nothing. And the outline doesn't show us. So this is our main background, the whole body. So we can set this to gray. Let's say, and then, yep. We'll set that to OK and hope it actually keeps the change, which it didn't seem to do. All right. For some reason, it's not wanting to do that, so let's just do like 215. Negative. Sure. I don't know what's going on. That's just, like I said, there are bugs. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, we've got a bug there, so just ignore that for the time being. And actually, so now we've got to reorganize everything a little bit. So what we're doing is just kind of moving it all. You just got to play around with this just to learn how to get everything sort of where it should be. Um, we're just going to save that. Let's try the gray one more time. Okay, it doesn't seem to want to work with this. All right, so we go back and we've got our main section here. And we'll actually just differentiate it a little bit because this one seems to want to work. We'll make this a little gray and click OK. Now, like I said, if we want to go with swatches, we can add this as a swatch. Let's say we made it red or something and we want to go back. All we do is click back on swatches and it will allow us to go straight back. All right, so now let's say we want to have a picture of a dog up for adoption. So to do that, we go to our library, and we can import images. Now as a quick note, um, whatever you call the name of the image is what it's going to be called when Macaw exports it. So in this case, we've got something called like ID-100, etc. Wouldn't be the best naming convention for an image. Obviously, you can update it at some point, but just remember that whatever you import is going to be the name of the image when, um, when Macaw publishes it. So we've got this image here, and let's just say we want to say it's up for adoption. And now I just got this image off the internet, I'm not sure what type of animal, what type of dog it is, so don't hate me. But anyways, we've got this here, and we can do a couple of effects like a drop shadow. So if we wanted to do, obviously this is a little cheesy, but whatever. We want to do a little drop shadow here, we can add that and then move it over. And the nice thing obviously is it lets you align things properly with the little brace here. You feel a little stop, which is always good. Anyways, so we've got that there and let's add in a little paragraph. So we're going to add in some text. And we'll say, let's just put some more mips in here because who cares, right? And let me choose how to scope with that. Generate some. All right, so we've got some more Ipsum. I'm going to paste that right in there. And then let's go give this image a name. So image adopt, and we'll call it. All right, and so now we've got the image that has a name here. And you'll kind of notice that Macaw tends to put things outside of elements. I think, though, if you, let's say we go, if we double click this, and then we insert an element, let's say like a text here, text there, uh, yeah. Sometimes I think it may insert it, it's iffy a little bit, just remember it's kind of, it's, I could be wrong, but yeah. All right, uh, let's put this in the main section. Okay, so we've got the main section and you can set different dimensions here, so if you want to increase the text or anything like that, we can drag that. Move it across. And this always got to be careful to be inside of the element when you move things. Okay. And we'll move 
this over. All right. Now let's get out of that. Let's make this. I will make the site look too nice and with the match much. All right. So we've got some text here, and let's say we want to just modify it a little bit, change the height. Let's say on this. We don't like that too much. So we've done that, and now what we're gonna do is let's just add a footer to the bottom. So one thing also about Macaw is as you add elements, it will increase the length for them. So we're going to add a container. Remember, we've got our container and then just our element attribute. And let's just add a huge ass footer, which we're going to, part of my language, we'll uh, make smaller in a second. Okay, and let's use the same color we were using for the header. So we'll click on our swatches, and then there we go. And let's move this up. And then you should notice, see how it so updates the bottom there for us. Okay, so now we've got a footer, and we can add just a little copyright text or something in there if we really wanted to. Um, big thing obviously is just changing this to just footer, and then we're going to want to move it down. So this is the one little thing I haven't really figured out too much about. It's just you got to reorganize things every time, just get it all going. All right. So now we've got a petted option here. Let's just clean this up a little bit because I. It's really ugly. The site that is. Uh, okay. I don't know. Should be good. Right there. So we've got that. Alright. So let's go over some of the other tools here. So we've got a little pet adoption, and now if we publish this, you'll see we've got a pet adoption thing here. You can select now. There's a couple things that Macon does not, as of this moment, do. So one thing is you can't have a hover attribute. So if you hover your mouse over, let's say a button. So let's make a button actually, just to do it, to do it. All right, so let's go put this here and we'll give it a color. Give it like this orange here. And then we'll add some text in it. Let's we'll say adopt me. white and just change the size a little bit okay so got this little adopting thing here and you want to just center it so you can what you do what I just did there is I clicked on the text so if you go let's actually move the elements into the proper areas so we're going to move this in and then move it down okay so what I'm going to do is I just click on double click in all right so now that I'm in the section that mean I can click on the P text, and then if I shift click on div element, when you go to the inspector tab, you'll see a bunch of different options for alignment. So, what we're going to want to do is we just want to um, line up vertically and horizontally just a little bit. Now, this is probably going to get messed up a little bit, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so what it's actually doing is it's um, aligning it by the inner element, so we've actually got to change. We've got to change this boxes um, width. I haven't found a way, up to my current knowledge, a way to automatically have it adjust so it doesn't like overflow to anyway. But um, let me know if there is a way. Okay, so we've got this button now, and now we can just select them both. Move it over here, and now if we wanted, we could call this button. Well, not a button because it's not a button per se, it's more of a link. So a dot element. And when you do that, when you put a link in here, it'll put it as an A ref. If you don't, it'll use a JavaScript type of link, which is a little bit ugly, obviously. So we'll just go to have a link to the dot in the A dot HTML. Now that brings us to another point. You can create additional pages. So we've got our index page here. And if we want, we can click this little plus. Or let's say we want to duplicate this page. Obviously, this trash icon is a link button. So what you can do is you can either click this right here, which will just duplicate it, and then also as a note, you can um, click copy page here. You can also view the page which we're already viewing it, rename it, or delete it. So they got a couple of redundant things on the right click, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to copy it. Now that we've copied it, we can go click rename, 
and we'll call this dot me. Okay. And now when we go back over here to the dot me element, we can change, we can also we can just go here. Now you'll see this is kind of a little bit of a bug right now. But yeah. When you if you a lot of things on Macaw can just be fixed by restarting it. So, anyways. Um, here's another thing, we've got different view modes. So as we go along, I'm going to kind of point out things. We've got an outline mode, which will just show you like a, um, I forgot the name, oh, it'll show you like a wireframe view. So that's what the outline is, and then wireframe is a real wireframe, I guess. Outline is, I guess, you know, just what it is in outline. So which is nice because, like I said, if the text goes over, you can see it here. So if an element, for example, which you'll have in Macaw sometimes, is you might see something that looks perfectly fine here. But then let's say this text box was too big. So if this text box was all the way down here, right? And let's export it just to show what it looks like. So if we export it, okay, so it didn't happen in here. It used to happen in the older versions, they may have fixed it, is it'll sometimes push this adopt me button down outside of the element, and you won't realize it until you actually look at the element itself. Okay, so moving that back, we don't even need that at this point. We'll save it. So going over here, we've kind of got our index page done. Um, just very basic, obviously. And you've got a couple different options. Uh, you know, you can play around, obviously, with everything. You can, obviously, you can toggle off the grid on and off. I like it just because you can have a better view of how everything is moved along. So anyways, let's go to the Adopt Me page and say, let the user adopt, fill out a form to adopt the dog if they want to. So at this point, what we're going to do is let's just delete these inner elements. So we're going to delete all of this. Just click delete. Okay, and then now we're going to create a form element. So inside of here, we're just going to draw. Now we're using the container tool. And we can click form, contact us. This will create a form for us. And then now we can start using these form tools. So we've got a couple options here. We've got the button option. And let's create a button to start off with, we might as well. This button will be submit. And the nice thing, obviously, is as a button, it's you can do a lot of nice styling with it. So we're just going to give it a nice little red here. Um, long moment. We'll give the text white, and we'll give the background red. And then you can add some feathering to it as well over here. So if you wanted to say five. For the feathering, you can do that. You can set it only to be on certain angles or all of them. Same thing with the border. So let's say we wanted to put a border on the bottom only. You could do one pixel. You could set it as black. So a lot of sites nowadays, if you look at GoDaddy, etc., they like to do that little padding on the bottom of links and stuff like that. Not so much buttons. But we could add a little three pixel padding here. And that would kind of give it a little bit of dimension. You can also select you know, if you want a different type of um, Border, so you've got like dotted lines, etc., or none, or just a full line. So you want to go with that one, and you can, let's say you also wanted a top border, you just click on top, and you can add it as well there. And then you click enter, and it'll add that one for you. So there you go, if you really want that, which we don't, so we're going to click none. Okay, so going back to this, now we've got our submit button, and we can just put that in here. So we've got our form submit button. Now, we've got a couple different options here. If you hold down, you just left click and hold down, you'll see different options, and as you scroll over, you'll see what they do. We've got an input, text area, select button, our checkbox, and then our radio buttons. So we want to do an input first, and actually, so we can do one of two things. We could do the normal text box where we give a placeholder, or we can just give a text and say first name, etc. So we're gonna, just for time's sake, we're not gonna put what each thing is, we're just gonna put, we'll put it in the placeholder. So we'll show you. I'll show you what I mean in a second. We'll have this one, and we'll call this input first name. And then we'll have another. We can duplicate this element if we wanted to, which we'll kind of do in a second here. So we're just going to click. I'm clicking Command C, or you can click. I'm not sure if there's a Control C. Yeah. So you got to just know to click Command C, and you can click Command V, and it'll duplicate it. And then we can move it down. So sometimes what you'll have to do is use the up or down arrows. In that case, that's what I'm doing right now. And if you click shift and down, it's a great thing. It moves it up, I think, about 10 pixels or so. So now we've got first name, and we can just put email address. And then we'll have a big um, 
form for them to find. So we're going to hold down again. We'll select text area. And then we'll let them write in some text here. So maybe their message or whatnot. Um, or additional info. Okay. And now just remember, as you enter the elements to reorder them, otherwise Macaw is going to do some weird formatting on it. Um, because remember, it's going to read from top to bottom, and that'll be the way it's output. Okay, so now let's put this inside of our contact us button. Then we could have actually made the section.main just to form contact us, since we're only putting that information in there, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now you're going to see something. We can't actually move this element, and the reason it might be a bug actually, but for a second there, what it was was the contact us box was too small. So if we make this a little bit bigger, yeah, I'm not. There are some bugs. Some things may just be me doing things wrong, which is very possible, um, since I haven't put that much time into it neatly. So we're just going to move this element down here and pretend like that didn't happen. Okay, so if we go back to the inspector, we've got a couple options here. Um, we've got our effects, all that. We've got some input options. So if we wanted to make, let's go over here for the email address, we can set the type as an email. And then we can give the input name as email, and for first name it'll just be first name. Simple as that, and we're just going to set it as a text. Okay. Now they actually used to have, um, I think, additional. There was advanced options which they may have gotten rid of. Um, just as a note, like I said before, I did use this in beta. So yeah, I think they got rid of those options where you used to be able to put placeholder. Um, I think it may have been accidental or whatnot, not positive. Anyway, so let's just give these elements uh, some names. So what we're going to do is we'll just put in some text here. Give us the first name. Then we'll, we'll duplicate this. And then duplicate it again. And we'll just call this optional or optional message. Okay. And this will be email address. Now, excuse obviously the way the site's laid out. This is obviously just a very quick overview. So I'm not going to pay too much attention to alignment and stuff like that. All right. So we've got this box here. Let's say we're going to save that. And then we could give these different texts. So we can say p.email, we can say p.firstname. Now, okay, so we'll call this p.firstname label. We'll just call it like that because obviously we don't have, want to have the same class name. And we'll call this p.optional message label. Okay, and now let's just reorder these elements. Always make sure this is very important that, like I said before, just have everything in order properly. Okay, so we've got all this done. And now what we're going to want to do is just preview it just for the sake of previewing. So we've got this published. See, you'll, you'll run into this a little bit, and that's probably just because of the way things are laid out. So if we actually look at everything, we just want to make sure nothing is overlapping. Okay, so let's actually put this inside of the form. Okay, now we'll see a little bit. Let's move this over a little bit. Okay, and then let's get inside of this element. And we're gonna move this over a little bit. See, like I said, there are bugs. I'm trying to move everything to the left, but it's only moving the optional message. So just remember that as we're going along here. Let's try publishing again. Okay, so we're having a little bit of an issue with that. We could pretend like we didn't put these in. Another way we could do this is just have a container and it would be perfectly fine. So if we add an additional container, put these three elements into it, it should be fine, but there's probably something giving a little bit of problems right now. Um, actually, what we can do is we can make this form smaller, and then we'll move this out, and then we have this form. Yeah, you know, 
Let's just get rid of these labels for now. Don't worry about it. We know what they're supposed to be, per se. And we can always obviously add a placeholder afterwards. Okay, so now what we've got is a little bit of an issue because everything's kind of moved around. And this does happen, so you'll see like this has no x y coordinate, which is weird. It's a bug. I mean, that is what it is. You can try moving things. Normally what I'll do is I'll just restart it and everything will work. You can if that's really too much, but I just don't want to restart this this time. Okay, so let's just pretend like this is where we want everything. We've got our submit button and all that. So just pretend like this all worked. And it, it normally will, and by the time you're using this, I can almost guarantee it will. Because from a month ago to what they have now, they have fixed tremendous amounts of bugs, and especially for the size of their team. So I have full faith that there won't be any issues like this in the near future. Okay, so let's say we wanted to add an additional breakpoint, right? So the way to do that is we can click here to the viewport tool, and we can scroll down and see what it'll look like. So this will actually show you how the elements will change based on the things. So let's say right here, when we get to, it's around four or five, well, let's see where it goes to. Okay, so around 6.30 is where the text kind of goes to downwards. So if we go to, let's say, like 6.10, let's do 5.80. Okay, so around 580. So, if we go to f so we're going to put a breakpoint at 600. And it'll create one here. We'll say yes. So when we hit 600, what we want to do is we want to change the logo to be smaller because we don't want it to go to two lines. So if we make this 30, what we can do now is save that. And obviously, you would move the alignment around a little bit. But So now what you'll see is as you make it smaller, the text gets smaller and it doesn't go to two lines. Now we go to two lines here because you might be another story where you have to add an additional breakpoint. But I'm just showing you the breakpoint tool. So what you can do is you can select between the two different breakpoints and it'll actually update it for you. And you'll see over here as well, you have little options and you can move this to change your breakpoint and then you can add yours through there. So we're going to put this back to 900. Now let's say we were editing an element, right? So we wanted to edit the H1 logo. But when you change the text, you'll see that it actually shows us what the different sizes are based on what the width is. So this is to unlimited, that's pretty much what it's saying. And this is from 600 less. So the way it currently works is the size you set is from a greater downwards, but they're actually going to make it for mobile kind of compatibility. Well, it supports mobile, but they're going to make it so you can set the size starting from 200 and go upward and have style change as you go up instead of just as you go down. So you'll, in the future, you'll be able to do it both ways, but Currently, you can only do it going downwards, have the style change. Not really much of a difference. So we can set, you'll see we can set different things and switch between them. Um, and it'll actually update everything for you. So we can go back here to the H1 logo. Now these are just some little tools you can do. Um, now to switch between breakpoints, the quick way is you just click outside of the box. So you just click outside of the canvas per se. And you can select which one you want. So we're going to go back to the 900, and we actually don't need the 600 because this is just a quick demo. So we're going to delete this. We're going to delete the breakpoint 600. We're going to save this again. All right, and now let's go over to something real quick here. Um, so what they have in Macaw as well is something called components. So if we want to create a component, it's pretty much just a saved attribute. So if you think about it, say like you created a header, we're going to say in this case, and you want this header is obviously going to be on every single page. So instead of having to recreate it every single time or select it, click Control C, Control V it over, what you can do is create a component. And so to do that, you just right click, click Create Component, and you give it a name. So what you always want to give it a name, and actually you don't even have to select both of this. If you just select Header, it should take the um, parent attribute. So you always just want to name it the same thing as it is already, because otherwise it's going to rename it, or at least it used to, and I'll show you that right now. So if we click Add, it actually changes the attribute. We don't want that. So I just undid that. I'm going to create this again. We're going to call the component header. And we click add, and then it creates it as a component. So now if we go to our library, you'll see the project. Inside the projects, the images we've imported. You can import images also by just dragging them over to the screen. And you can also delete them. And then just as a note, it does cache the image here, just as the thumbnail. So let's say you update an image in Photoshop, and then you go to view it here, and it's not looking the same, or at least it didn't used to do it this way. 
you might see the outdated version, but once you drag it over and save it, it'll update it for you, so you don't have to worry. So let's say we have this component here, and we create a new page. So we're just going to create a blank page, and we we'll call it Ignore. Now we are having some weird... Uh, there are bugs right now, like I said, so I'm trying to type here, and it's actually just doing line of things, so we're just going to put that in there. We'll put the header in here, and as you drag it, you'll see that it just puts it straight in. Now, just as a note, let's move the X, we'll almost move the Y actually. Just as a note though, the header does not um, update. So, by that, I mean, let's say we update the header over here, the component is still going to be a copy, is still going to be the version that it was when you first created the component. It's not going to update. If you want to re update it, you'd have to either change it on all pages or recreate the components and then transfer it back over. Now, as a note, the Macaw team does plan on having it where it'll automatically update across all pages. They just haven't had the development time yet to do it um, with the size of their team, which is understandable, obviously. Um, so that is something to look forward to in the future, but it does not currently work where it'll update it across all pages. Which, if you're using PHP, you only really need to do it one time, and then you can do a PHP include on every single additional page. So let's just save that again, and when we go back to preview, we'll have our main page. And then we can click the Adopt Me button, and this actually links to, should link to the Adopt Me page, which, like I said, if you kind of just view that, it didn't really change the um, link up in there. It kind of still says it's index.html, but that's irrelevant right now. So in here, you can select, you can see your different pages. So you can select through them, index, or the O page. And then this is, I think, is the rendered page, yeah, so. This is what we're currently viewing, then you can view the source code of it, which is really nice, you can switch between it. You can view the CSS for the page, um, and then this is the JavaScript, which we haven't written in yet. So if we really wanted to, which, when I used it, the scripting portion was a little bit if, iffy, I don't think it was in the final version type of thing, I think they had some bugs with it. But if you wanted to write some code, there is an option, and you can click show scripts. And then you can write some code away, so you know whatever you want over here, and that just is all associated. You can either use the element names or whatever variable name you give it, and you can use it through the scripting, and then it'll just export that out for you. Um, and so that's pretty much just a basic overview of Macaw. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Like I said, um, I'm no professional, you know, by any means. However, you know, I have been playing with Macaw for a little bit. Just a college student, you know, doing programming and uh, learning as much as I can. So feel free to ask me any questions you guys want. Um, and just remember, there are some bugs, so some things may not work the way you want them to. And that doesn't mean they won't in the future, because obviously Macaw is continuously evolving. And there's obviously bugs still to be fixed. But like I said, from a month ago, they have drastically improved. And that really just shows the caliber of the team working on it. So... I, you know, I would expect there to be a lot of great things coming out from the Macaw team, and uh, you should definitely look forward to this. And if you haven't checked it out already, feel free to. They are going to make a PC version that hasn't come out as of the time of recording this video. However, there is a Mac version. It's not, to my knowledge, public at this point, outside to anyone who hasn't backed it on Kickstarter. But it, from what they said, it should be available on the Mac App Store when it does come out, so you'll be able to download it from there. And then obviously you can get updates, it automatically updates, probably, I, I don't know what script they use, but you can just, just click check for updates, you can check for updates. Um, we can actually go through real fast, just things in here, you can import to Canvas, so that just, you can just import things, you can publish, you've got your publish settings also, which is important. And I don't even know how that got there, but, so we can go to our publish settings. And if it pops up, which it doesn't seem to want to, so we may not be able to go there. Just remember... If you have any issues with Macaw, just restart it, and that'll fix most of your issues. A lot of things just seem to be startup issues. Um, I'm not sure why, but it just tends to fix it. So you can do things like consolidate the page styles if you don't want each page to have its own styles. Uh, there's a bunch of different options. I just like to keep the defaults. Um, you can remove all white space if you're putting it into final mode and you want to kind of minify it, per se. You can select what units. I, I just like the default. Everything looks good. Now, it'll publish the grids if you want, and then the ordering is kind of how it'll publish everything. Um, and you can s change that if you want to. I would not touch that, but it's up to you. So we've got that. And then um, 
you can just you've got a, a bunch of different shortcuts here. You'll see most everything has keyboard shortcuts, which is great. Uh, you know, if you want to send up things to the back front stuff like that. Um, so there's a lot of different things. I was mostly just using my mouse just to not get people too confused with when I was clicking but like clicking buttons on my keyboard for you not to know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different options. There's a lot coming to Macaw, you know, a lot to look forward to in the future, and a lot of different things that, you know, we'll be looking forward to. Now, in terms of Bootstrap, they don't have Bootstrap built into it yet. Um, they said they might be adding it. There's a lot of things they're going to obviously want to add, but like I said, their team isn't too big at the moment, which I'm sure once they go in full release and they start making more money, obviously, then they'll be able to expand the size of their team. But of course, more developers doesn't always mean faster content, though for the most part it does. So um, just to keep that in mind, and really Macaw is a great tool to use, not only for mockups, but just for designing sites. Now, obviously, there's a lot you still have to do after the site, but you don't have to build it from scratch with code once you're done with it. So it is a great tool. Um, like I said, feel free to ask any options below. Well, any, option, uh, any questions in the comments, and I'll be glad to answer them if I have time. Thanks. And thank